is uh, has different inclination. Here is very very steep, and here is um, rather steep. Here might be a normal inclination, and here is uh, maybe a little bit flare, but it has uh, uh, period problems. So we have uh, this uh, um, apical migration of the CR. So in this cases, if you apply a force, a distal force, uh, in these three cases, the difference of the distance is not very, is not very much different. Only in the case of the migration. Yes, it's true. Maybe this is a little bit shorter here in, uh, let's give a reference in C. Maybe the distance is a little bit shorter and in A and B might be a little bit larger, but it doesn't make a great difference. But, but, and so the moments here are not very different, maybe only in this case in D, we have uh, a larger moment, and therefore, as we will see, uh, this will have a big impact in the movement. But now, let's see what happens for mesodistal forces. So just imagine that you have to close uh, a big diastema. So, you see, you apply this force, and uh, there is basically no rotation, very little rotation. Uh, since the incisor is inclined, in this case, this distance is increasing, and it becomes really very large indeed. So, as a matter of fact, you have an increasing distance and therefore an increasing moment. So, what does it mean? What does it mean that in all these cases, we have a different difficulty in uh, moving this tooth without a rotation to close the diastema here? Now, many of you are thinking, but Giorgio, very likely you will have a, a wire here that connects you with the other tooth, and let's imagine here is the diastema to close. Yes, it's true. And so what you're thinking is that even if you have a rotation, the wire will take care about that. That's really what happens. But you have to remember something, that if you apply on a bracket, let's say this is a bracket, you apply this force and a big moment is generated and you have a wire inside this. The wire will resist to the moment thanks to forces that are generated inside. And these forces are normal, we say, so perpendicular to the wire. And these are the forces that are um, basically generating what we call friction. So the larger is this moment, the largest is the freak, the larger is the friction that you create. And there is a certain point that you really can't uh, move the tooth because the friction you create is too much. So there are two possibilities. Either you don't place a wire and you get a lot of rotation, or you place a wire which is very, has a lot of play, and you accept the rotation because it has a lot of play, or you might, if this moment are very big, as in cases with flared teeth, you might have so much friction that you cannot close the space. This case here was a very bad case, of course, and was uh, treated by a student of mine, 
I think about 20 years ago or something like that. He was a guy who was attending my private courses. And after some time, he told me, Giorgio, I really can't close this space. I thought it was the most stupid thing in the world, but I can't close this diastema. So what I'm having is a Y here and an elastic chain, but the teeth have moved a little bit at the beginning and then I'm stuck. Month after month after month, I have my elastic and I'm pushing and not moving. So, so one day I went and visited this guy, this person, and I have realized that the problem with uh, uh, the impossibility of closing this diastema was due to the fact that there was too much uh, rotation, inclination of these teeth, and this was uh, creating a lot of friction between the two brackets. So, <clears throat> we have, I could see immediately when uh, you were using the elastic chain that the incisor were tipping together and rotating to the mesial. So this was really too bad and creating so much friction that uh, uh, there was a, a binding between the wire and the brackets. And this was due to the fact that uh, the line of action of the force, so the elastic, was so far from the CR. The CR had migrated, had migrated apically, so they were far both vertically and horizontally. Now what did we do? in order to um, to get a correction of this problem. We'd ha we had actually to change completely our mechanics and, uh, and we had to move the line of the force somewhere else. This was enough uh, in order to close the space very quickly, so this was the result after a few months. and. Um, uh, but you can't get the reason why this uh, was uh, working. The, the system worked very well because the line of action of the force was placed palatally, as you see it here, and so it was much more apical and much more um, towards the palate. So in this way we were getting much much closer to the CR of both units and in this way there was much less tendency for rotation and this decreased the amount of rotation that we could get.